Okay. Maybe I've got a problem. Now I love my caffeine addiction as much as the next guy, but what should I be drinking to help me focus better, study faster, be more creative, and be stronger in the gym? It took me around $300 worth of coffees, teas, and energy drinks to figure it out, but now I know what helps me perform best at each of my daily tasks and what will likely help you achieve yours. I googled how to do that, Mom. What inspired me to make this video was the realization that my caffeine consumption was basically just a socially acceptable addiction. I feel like I've almost lost the ability to make caffeine work for me, and instead, I drink caffeine when my body tells me to, rather than using caffeine as a tool. Now, in reality, I'm not quite as bad as I made it seem like in the intro, but I do invest a lot of time and resources into it. So to try to kind of recapture some of what caffeine should be for me, and maybe pivot it towards being used as a tool, I tried to jot down what type of caffeine I consume, when I'm consuming it, and why I'm consuming it on a regular daily basis. And when I take a step back and I look at the reasons I was drinking caffeine, I realized that I could place everything into one of two categories. I'm either drinking caffeine to help me be better at what I'm doing, or I'm just kind of drinking caffeine out of a habit. So in search of the best caffeine sources for studying, creativity, focus, and exercising, I'm first going to eliminate the habit caffeine consumption, and then I'm also going to dig into some of the scientists and figure out why different caffeine sources hit different. I mean, it just feels a little bit different whenever I drink coffee versus tea versus an energy drink, and so there's gotta be an explanation for that, right? I'm currently a second year medical student, so answering a question like this about a chemical is always gonna start with reading a bunch of scientific articles for me. But because that takes a really long time, while I researched, I started experimenting with caffeine to see how it made me feel subjectively before I learned the sciences. I was kind of hopeful that this would allow me to see if my body felt different rather than just agreeing blindly with what the research was telling me. I started off with my normal routine, a cup of coffee around 9 a.m., a mid-afternoon pick-me-up cup around 2, and a pre-workout caffeine packet or energy drink whenever it came time to lift. This totaled to around 350 milligrams of caffeine per day, which is fairly close to the upper limits of what's deemed medically acceptable. Now what's weird about this experiment is that it feels like my body's kind of gravitating towards certain caffeine sources for certain activities. Like when I first wake up in the morning, I'm not craving an energy drink. And when it gets to being gym time, I don't really care anything about drinking a cup of coffee. Now this is kind of in line with some of the neurochemistry behind caffeine, like its dopaminergic activities and its ability to increase your motivation and your association. But before I finish my research, there's still two experiments that I need to try. I need to rotate the types of caffeine that I drink for specific activities. And I also need to drink caffeine for things that I actually enjoy. Because so far I've only tried this experiment or these types of experiments with things that suck. Like studying or lifting weights. So, I mean, I guess if I have to go play video games for the sciences, I will. Y'all are so lucky that I'm so dedicated. The big conversation around whether caffeine is naturally sourced or synthetic is based on the misconception that they impact the body differently. From what I could find, that's not necessarily true as natural and synthetic caffeine are actually chemically identical compounds, but one is separated from things like coffee beans while the other is made in a lab. So they both function identically and they do this through four mechanisms. Dr. Huberman, who's a neuroscientist at Stanford Med, made a great video explaining how caffeine impacts the body, which I've put in the description below, but I'll just summarize it here for you. Now, regardless how it feels when you drink caffeine, caffeine doesn't actually give you additional energy in the sense of like adding energy that you don't already have. It actually works by, quote, delaying sleepiness or, quote, reinforcing thoughts and behavior patterns. Those are, the t those are typically the two approaches that the, the literature describes caffeine as impacting. And all this means is that caffeine stops a molecule which is called adenosine, whose entire job is to bind to receptors in your brain and tell the body that it's sleepy. Caffeine stops that molecule from doing that in the brain. Now adenosine has other jobs of course, but that is the mechanism here. Now besides blocking adenosine from binding its receptors, caffeine also works to increase the amount of dopamine and acetylcholine, which are neurotransmitters in the forebrain. And this is kind of where you notice some of that like mental sharpness or maybe focus or even creativity that some people associate with drinking caffeine. Now that's how caffeine works. 
And that's not really going to change depending on whether you get your caffeine from coffee, tea, or some random rain puddle. But there's got to be something that's in these drinks that makes them feel different rather than just like the carbonation in an energy drink. So even though I've done a lot of reading, I think it's time that I kind of pivot my approach and start looking at some of the other molecules that are in these drinks rather than just caffeine. Because drinking a cup of coffee does make me feel different than drinking an energy drink. I mean, it's possible that that's like completely in my head. I mean, the voices are getting louder lately. Um, but you know, doesn't coffee have like antioxidants in it or something? And doesn't tea have like some kind of weird like witchcraft sorcery in it? I'm not exactly sure on the specifics, but I'm gonna do some digging and I'll let you know if any of these ingredients actually make a difference. There's one study that showed that there may be something in yerba mate that works with the caffeine to increase memory. In a separate study, coffee showed a neuroprotective effect that was not replicated when compared with only using caffeine. The researchers think that this effect, which has actually been documented in several other studies and personal anecdotes, is due to the polyphenols and the antioxidants within the coffee, not the caffeine itself. Energy drinks contain a variety of chemicals that have preliminary data for offering neurocognitive performance enhancements. That's the whole reason that these molecules are actually included in the blend. Some of these are molecules like taurine, ginseng, and alpha-GPC, which seem to impact focus, while others are molecules like theanine that work to decrease the negative side effects of caffeine, like the jitters. Now, I honestly didn't expect to find too much when I dove into the research and asked the question, what is the best type of caffeine to drink for creativity, focus, and exercise enhancements? But I think I've got an answer. So when running these experiments on myself, I actually noticed that I perform best whenever I have a cup of coffee a few hours after I wake up, maybe a cup of like yerba mate sometime around noon. It's like a little pick me up to you know, keep pushing, keep studying, and then an energy drink right before I work out. Now it's important to note, I did find an energy drink company called Ghost Energy. I've got a um, can here and it contains pretty much everything that I care about in terms of studying focus creativity and strength training uh, from, from a scientific means. It's got caffeine for the stimulant, which is kind of a given. It's got theanine for the smoothness. It's got taurine for the strength increase. And it's got alpha GPC for the focus. All those are pretty promising molecules whenever you look at the literature. Now I'm of course not sponsored or affiliated with them at all or very important to be honest. I just wanted to point out this product and say that it's a good product and kudos to whoever is formulating it because you've got some pretty good stuff in there. Uh, that, that definitely took some time to make. So hats off to Ghost. And they taste pretty good too. So if you're the type of person that's like chugging Red Bull so that you can study or work and you're looking for an alternative that's also zero calories that seems to follow a little bit more of, of kind of what the science is leaning to, then that's a pretty good option. Now when it comes to easy tasks like playing video games, I really didn't notice too much of a difference depending on which caffeine source I ingested on, you know, like how good I was, um, or even how like focused I felt in on the game or chatting with my friends, which goes to show you I was, I'm purely doing it for like the caffeine dopamine bump. Now I actually personally know um, some competitive gamers um, that are a little caffeine crazy. So it's entirely possible that my <laughs> horribly low skill level kind of prevented me from, from experiencing the benefits of caffeine because there's a lot of studies that show that caffeine actually reduces your reaction time, which means it increases your reaction time, which would be good um, if you were like a competitive video game player, but I'm not. So I pretty much just got destroyed regardless. God, I suck. Oh, I'm bad. Ah. I suck. Oh. Now I think that my experience with caffeine might be pretty closely in line to what the research is saying. But just a quick disclaimer for people that care about, you know, like quality of research and where I'm getting this stuff. The way that I found most of this information was on um, resources like PubMed and Google Scholar, just piecing through articles and even databases like UpToDate and Examine.com. And what I ended up doing was trying to select only the meta-analyses when possible. Although there, I haven't found a study that actively compares or asks the question that I'm asking. So a lot of this was me taking from separate meta-analyses and piecing it together. Regardless, it is entirely possible that I misinterpreted the data because it's difficult for us Southerners to read. So I'm going to include the links in the description so that you can check out these articles for yourself if you care to. Now pretty much universally across all of the articles I read, it turns out that caffeine actually 
does show significant benefits for things like focusing and exercise and motivation. Now this is something that we all kind of intuitively knew and we could feel whenever we drink caffeine. But what kind of shocked me is that the different molecules in these different beverages actually do make them better at specific tasks. Let's start by looking at exercise. One meta-analysis that I read showed that you can increase your endurance, vertical jump, speed, max bench press, and overall sports performance with steroids. No, well, yes, but no, with caffeine, but specifically the caffeine that they were evaluating was energy drinks. So energy drinks are the best form of caffeine for exercising. Who would have thought? I thought that my mom told me my heart would explode if I drank an energy drink and then played basketball. Maybe that's why I wasn't very good. So this study actually had some pretty impressive results, but the thing that was most intriguing to me is that there was a significant correlation between your athletic performance and the amount of a molecule called taurine that were in these energy drinks. The reason that that's so important to me is because taurine is not found in things like coffee or yerba mate naturally. And some companies will like add it synthetically, but it's not naturally in there. And so if there is an increase in athletic performance whenever you pair caffeine and taurine, well, then that's pretty easy to draw a line to say that caffeine sources like energy drinks or maybe even some pre-workouts um, that contain taurine but don't have so much caffeine that you experience the negative impacts of caffeine like the shakes or whatever are going to help you perform at a higher peak athletic performance than things like teas or coffee. That's pretty freaking sweet. Very expensive, but pretty sweet. So that's exercising. Let's talk a little bit about focus creativity for studying and work. Now, it turns out that the research around focus and creativity is shockingly similar. And the reason for that is that there is not a neural pathway, which is just the, basically the way that the neurons in our brains talk to each other. There's not one of those for creativity that we have found yet. However, there are neural pathways for focus. Now, a lot of people think that that means that creativity is just a subset of focus that we've labeled with a different term. But regardless, any study that I read that said that they were looking at creativity, when I really did, dug into the methods and looked at what they were talking about, all of the neurochemistry that they were talking about was talking about the focus pathways. Now, you don't have to know that, but just be aware if you're digging into it yourself, you might run into something like that. Regardless, I'm going to address focus and creativity as one topic. One study that I read had individuals sip either coffee or tea all day long and measure their creativity, their focus output. Now what they ended up finding was that everybody experienced heightened focus um, or motivation from their baseline, which means no caffeine, but that the coffee drinkers experienced a lot more interruptions with sleep. Now this is probably because coffee has a higher caffeine content than most teas. Now there was another study that was actually out of Harvard that found that caffeine consumption, where regardless where you get it, actually does help with memory retention which is pretty, pretty impactful for those of us that are studying or trying to do something impactful at their job. But they also noted that it is not a replacement for sleep. And if you're using caffeine as a replacement for sleep, it's an overall net negative on your memory retention. Now, of course, that may not be true for like one night of cramming, but overall in the long, these are looking at super long-term memory. So you take these two articles and you kind of pair them up with some of the research that Dr. Matt Walker has been doing on sleep and you come to terms with this protocol that the best caffeine protocol is one that's going to allow you to keep your body during your focus hours at like a, like a, a baseline or a low basal rate of caffeine, but allows you to cut off your caffeine early enough so that it doesn't impact your sleep. And that will allow you to actually get the maximum benefits from caffeine as well as the maximum benefits for studying and allow you to be as focused, productive, and creative as you can be. Now, the bad part is that to properly do this, you know, to, to allow the caffeine to have metabolized in your body before you go to bed, if you're going to sleep at like 10 or 11, like most of us do, you're actually gonna have to cut off caffeine consumption at like 10 a.m. or noon. So, I'm probably gonna ignore that, but that is what the science says. 10 a.m., you gotta be kidding me. All in all, the best lesson that I've learned from this experiment came from me cutting out my habit caffeine consumption. And that taught me that if I am to delay my caffeine intake by you know 90 minutes, two hours, three hours, and to after I wake up, then it really helps me avoid that caffeine crash that happens about you know noon or two, and it allows me to 
drink significantly less caffeine throughout the day. Now, I kind of stumbled across this because my habit caffeine was my morning cup of coffee, and so I cut that out, ended up not drinking caffeine until about 10, and I was just like, wow, I actually feel real good at about noon, or two, two is usually when I would crash. But this is a recommendation that I had heard about from Dr. Huberman in one of his podcasts on caffeine, and that's that if you delay uh, if you want the maximum results from caffeine, you should delay your consumption until 90 minutes to two hours after you wake up because that allows all of your adenosine to essentially be flushed out so that it doesn't resaturate the receptors as soon as your caffeine gets metabolized. So that actually worked out really well. So I'm probably gonna end up trying to follow a lot of his other protocols and hopefully it will turn me into some cross between Stephen Hawking and LeBron James, but maybe without the Lou Gehrig's disease or the hairline, I'll keep you updated. So all in all, to summarize from what I could find, the best consensus caffeine source for exercising between those three, coffee, tea, and energy drinks would be energy drinks. Um, and it seemed like the, the thing that tipped it in the favor of energy drinks was tari. Now that's for exercising, for focusing, for studying and work. It just seems that any of the three would work really well. You just have to be able to be mindful um, of your caffeine intake throughout the day and make sure that you're not going to interrupt with your sleep. But just like everything else, which type of caffeine works best for you is going to be entirely individual and depend on your preferences, your personal health, and the limitations that you and your doctor have placed on yourself. I personally have my habits and I associate coffee and tea with studying or, or maybe even like reading with my wife while I associate energy drinks with you know, lifting weights, playing video games, honestly, and then working, whether that be for YouTube or, or the, the business that I run. But when I was reading through these articles, I mean, there's just so much that, that I, I just really couldn't even absorb at all in the couple of weeks it took me to make this. So let me know in the comments, what are your favorite types of caffeine? Have you, do you, do you as well feel the difference between drinking coffee and energy drinks? I mean, do I need to go see a doctor about that? Am I pronouncing yerba mate like an idiot? Make sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be diving into all different types of chemicals and approaches that are going to allow you to be as focused as possible and get the most done in the smallest amount of time because that's something that is becoming increasingly important to me personally. I will take you on that journey with me. I hope you figured out how to make caffeine work for you through some of my anecdotes and the sciences that I kind of summarized. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.